I want to show you some preferences and setups that I have in place for Logic. Now, everyone does this differently, and this is most definitely not a comprehensive list of preferences. These are the ones that I use, however, and the preferences I think you should at least think about whether you're a beginner or more advanced user. So let's start by opening up the preferences. I'm gonna move right over to advanced, and you should have enable complete features. This will allow you to take advantage of everything Logic offers. I can't really think of a good reason not to have this on. So I have this on all the time. Move over to general and project handling. Startup action, I have select a template. The main reason is I don't want to open an existing project or a recent project. If I have a very complex project, maybe it's got 150 tracks, and I have selected open that one up, it's going to take a minute. And if I'm not working on that project, I don't really want to sit through that. So I have select a template, and then I can go from there and open up whatever it is I want to open. So that's why I have that's mostly because I don't want these two. Anything else, I don't really have strong feelings about. Move over to editing. Fade tool click zones and marquee tool click zones. These will not be checked. Check these two off and let me show you what that will do. My cursor, normal behavior, stretch out or shorten a region, audio region, I can loop a region. But now because I've checked off those boxes, if I go to the upper right hand corner of this audio region, it becomes the fade tool. I can pull in and create a fade. So it's very convenient. If I go to the middle of a region, it becomes the marquee tool. And now I can slice this up just by clicking. And my marquee tool adds functionality to this cursor. Once again, it becomes a multi-tool. All right, back to preferences. Let's move on over to audio. In the audio, you have the output and input device. This will depend on your interface. Also, if you're doing Zoom, you may need to choose this so other people can hear the audio coming out of Logic. The buffer size is the main thing I want to pay attention to here. If you're recording a track with a mic like a vocal or a guitar, you want to use the smallest buffer size your computer can get away with. In my case, I'm using 64. That works great for me. So if you're listening back to your headphones and you're hearing the signal come back to you much later than what you're singing, like an echo, this is probably because your buffer size is much bigger than it should be. So select 64 or somewhere in this range and it's gonna work just fine. Now, if you get to a very complex project where you have a couple hundred tracks or maybe a hundred tracks and your computer is working too hard, select a bigger number and this will cut down on the load on your CPU and everything will run much better. Moving on to recording. What I'd like to pay attention to here is the MIDI. Whenever I'm recording over a MIDI region, I generally want it to merge. That means when I record new notes, it adds it to the notes that I've already recorded. I don't want it to replace it. So this is what I have selected here because that's generally what I'm doing. I don't want to create a new track. I don't want to do any of that. With the audio creating a take folder, I don't use take folders that much. I don't really like them, but because of the way I work, it doesn't matter what I have selected here. That's going to be up to you. You can create a new track, do whatever it is you like, but I don't really use this function too much. The main thing I do have to pay attention is to the MIDI merge. Speaking of MIDI, let's move on to MIDI. MIDI 2.0, this is something you might want to Google and check up on, but if you have a newer keyboard that has the capabilities of MIDI 2.0, then you may want to have this checked. Much more data comes across and you may be able to take advantage of that. It's not important for me, so I don't have it checked as of yet. Let's go to display. This is something I get asked about a lot dark background. I don't like the bright background at all. I like dark. And then horizontal or vertical lines. Horizontal lines, you can see the white line gets much bigger or smaller. And generally with logic, when you first look at it, the vertical lines are going to be much smaller than this. 
I like seeing the vertical lines, not necessarily here, but somewhere in this range. And that helps me spot things a lot easier on the timeline. Now, many of the other logic preferences will be dependent on your workflow and what genre of music you're working on. They also become more important as you become a more advanced user. So our control bar and display, when you first open up Logic, it probably looks like this or close to this. I want to use custom. So I'm going to go down here and select custom. Now yours probably still won't display all this information. So open this up again and go down to customize control bar and display. And in here I have selected software monitoring, pre fader metering, both of these you probably won't have on. And then I want to see sample rate, tempo, time signature, key signature, MIDI activity, and performance meter. So I have all those selected. Now to make logic open up this way each and every time, you then want to click on save as default. Once you do that, every project you open, it will give you this information. Sample rate, 48, some people are at 96, some at 44.1. When you're working with other folks, this becomes extremely important. It also needs to sync up with your interface, which should happen naturally, but it's something you want to know. CPU. This informs us what we want to have selected in our preferences. So if this thing is going all the way across, when we go over to audio, we want our buffer size to be bigger. If it's not moving much, we can get away with a small buffer size, but this is what we pay attention to to tell us whether we need to increase that buffer size. Pre-fader metering, once I select that box, I have this button over here. And this will allow me to pay attention to the gain of an audio track, what it was recorded at. So if it was recorded extremely hot or extremely low, I can then manipulate that by checking this and going over to our gain and boosting this up or cutting it down. As you become more advanced, this becomes a very important thing to pay attention to. So I'm constantly turning this on and off. So now let's look at our snap regions functionality. Look at snap right here, smart right next to it. Open this up. And when you first open up logic on any new project, the default is going to be snap regions to relative value. I prefer snap regions to absolute value. That's what I use 90% of the time. So I check this off and unfortunately I have to remember to do that at the beginning of every new project because the default is relative value. Now you also have to do that down here in your piano roll or edit window. And I already have selected that, but I'm going to turn on relative value. And let me demonstrate what this does. Now, if we look at this note right here, it's been recorded a little bit early. If I drag it over to the next grid line, it's going to want to be early again. It's relative to that line. Now, if I select absolute value, when I drag this over, I can attach it or sync it right with this line. It's going to go right to the grid line. That's what I use most of the time when I'm moving regions or notes. So that's why I prefer absolute value. Let's look at track header components. Go over to classic electric piano, do a control click. Here's the menu. I have an awful lot checked off. Mute, solo. I don't think it comes with freeze checked off. So I'll turn that off for a moment. Go back there, track header components, and freeze. So what does this do? If I click the freeze button, hit the space bar. What this has done is it has created an audio track of this MIDI data. So now if you look over here at electric piano, the instrument, I can no longer manipulate that. It's grayed out. I can't make changes to it. If I want to, I have to uncheck this. The reason to do this is it saves the CPU. If I have 100 tracks with 100 instruments and 100 plugins, the CPU might be working extremely hard. So if I check this, it saves it from having to use all the effects and all the plugins. Once I turn it off, I'm back to a normal track and I can manipulate whatever I want. So now let's talk about our options for creating a new track. Starting with software instrument, generally I want to create an empty channel strip. 
I don't want the default patch, which is the electric piano. I don't want any of these. I generally want to just create the track and decide from there. If you do have the default patch, one of the things that happens is you create this electric piano, which has two buses. It's going to create every time. I generally don't use those reverbs. So I prefer to start with whatever track it is that I want to create and not have Logic decide for me. Let's go back and let's look at audio. Main thing here is your input. You want to know what input you're coming in through with your interface. Is it one or two? And have that selected. I'm using input three. That way, every time I create an audio track, it's already set up to come in through input three. All right, take a look at our tools for a second here. If I click on this tool selector, I can use any of these. I'm generally starting off with a pointer tool. Now, this is our command tool. So whatever I click, whenever I click the command, it turns into that tool. So if I select the eraser, for example, and I hold my command key, it now becomes the eraser. So it's a quick way to access a second tool. Generally, I have it on marquee tool just because that's what I like, but you can select whatever one you want. The main thing to know is once you hit your command key, it turns that into your second tool. The loops, let's take a look at loops. There's one big thing here I want you to look at, and that's gonna be down here in the lower corner. Play song in, play in song key. So I don't want my loops to play in the original key. I wanna hear what it sounds like in the key that I'm working in. So if I'm in C major up here, it's gonna play this track in C major and I can hear what it's gonna sound like in this key. It's probably always gonna sound good in the original key, but if I move it up seven half steps or something like that, chances are it might not sound as good and I wanna know what it's gonna sound like. So the last thing I wanna talk about is screen sets. I'm gonna close up the loop browser. So right now we're on view one or screen set one. If I click number two, I can get another way to view. I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna close some information. I'm gonna open up the piano roll, make it a little bigger. So that's that'll be my second view. I'll click number three, another screen set. Let's open up the loop browser. Let's make our tracks bigger. Now I'll click number four, and create a fourth screen set. And this one I'll click X to open up my mixer, close the information. All right, so now I have these four different views. If I click number one on my keyboard or keypad, I'm back to that one, number two, number three, and number four. It's a quick way to get different views. Oops, gotta be in here, there we go. So the main point of this is if you make multiple changes to each screen set, then it becomes useful. If all you're doing is opening up your edit panel, that's probably not a useful screen set. It's when you make multiple changes. Like in this case, I made my tracks bigger, have the loop browser open, multiple things at once make screen sets useful. The other thing you need to know about screen sets is whether you want to lock them or not. So if I lock this, what happens, I'm gonna make a change to this screen set, number three, notice I made the track smaller. I'll close the loop browser. Go back to one, now I'll come back to that screen set and notice it's back to the original setting that I had. The tracks are bigger, the loop browser's open. If I don't lock this and I make changes, when I come back to this, those new changes are now in place. The configuration is what I just did. So if you want to keep or hold on to those settings, lock those up. And that way, every time you come back, it'll start just as you first set it up. So I'm sure you'll come up with a set of preferences you really like. It's very dependent on what genre of music you're creating and your personal workflow. Hopefully this will push you in a good direction and at least get you thinking about what works for you. 